We, we pivoted this week. We've been doing a lot of pivoting since March. And this week we had planned this uh, whole different gathering really for today in terms of the direction. But uh, this week, um, I just had, and Shelly and I both just had so many opportunities to be in the lives of people and in conversation, um, praying with people, walking beside people. And while so many of the stories uh, of this season in our house are amazing, uh, people's businesses are doing great, people's families are doing great, um, their influence has grown. Uh, there are as many stories of people who are really struggling and hurting. And it just, uh, it just seemed like today that we needed to pivot a little bit. And so that's why we created a little bit of a, I don't know if it looks more like a study, you can vote office study slash den, uh, reading room, dining room, uh, depending on where you live. Uh, create home and come from our house to your house. And for those of you that are in the house, you're in your house. But for all of us at Passion City, just to come from our house today to your house, wherever it is, whether it's uh, in, in, in town or Indiana or India, um, just to come as family today, and to let big church be made small. Next week, we're gonna talk about small church being made big, but today, just this idea that it is in fact for everybody. And I believe God wants to do what we sang about earlier. I believe he wants to bring a breakthrough to people. And God's timing and our timing aren't always the same, but God's heart is always the same. And that is to do what is best for you and what brings him the most glory. And so today, we're just gonna do something a little different. We've got uh, some of our house over here, by the way, um, on a, the, these guys decided to jump off YouTube and jump on a Zoom call. So it's pretty awesome. I can get the weather forecast from David Chanley up there if we need to do that at any point uh, during the gathering. There's Todd Phillips, who every Sunday, I promise you, is in the parking lot, proudly wearing his Georgia hat today. Thank you so much for that. Uh, <laughs> go dogs uh, once again. But uh, thank you guys for uh, zooming in with us today. You all look amazing. And um, I'm just, uh, last gathering, we had a lady sitting by her pool. It was so awesome. Um, she had her sunglasses on and the pool back behind her, a little water feature going. And I was like, yeah, that's what we're all aiming for right there. Um, but uh, Misty Page is right in the middle, had a big birthday this week. I'm not allowed to say which one, but it was a milestone. And we love you. Misty Page is uh, the brains behind every passion gathering. Look at this amazing collection of people, would you? Uh, it's our house. And so I wanted to sit like I'm in your living room or across the table. I want you to lean in today, not like, hey, there's this big production coming across my computer screen or our television screen. And I wanted you just to know today that God knows who you are and he knows your name. And it's different when it's personal. I love that giving today. I don't know how much Procter & Gamble is paying us for that, by the way, but I hope we get a check of some kind. It doesn't have to be $5 million, but I mean, we just put Tide out for crying out loud for the people of the world. But, um, you know, Mark mentioned investing, and he said one of the ways you can be a part of this story is by owning stock, and, and he gave the stock price, whatever. And it's, it's kind of like that. Some of you are in the market, some of you not so much. Some of you, it's a big lump sum thing. You don't know much about it, but stock market has been crazy the last few months. And if you've got something in there, that little number you hear at the end of the day, it's not just, oh, the market was up, or this was that, or the market was down. You're like, no, my stock was up. And all of a sudden, I've got a little tiny slice of that today and it's personal. It's not just the Dow Jones average anymore. It got personal because I saw that I made $2.75 on my investments today when the stock market went up. It became personal. That's a very surface example. They get a lot more serious as the consequences go up, but all of a sudden something that maybe didn't really mean as much to you when it landed in your house, it became your story and it became personal. And I think that's what God wants to happen in your life. He wants this miracle, resurrection, gospel kingdom to become personal, where it's not just a grand story, but it's your story. And that's what I believe he wants to do today. I was reading this text in Psalm 113. It's so powerful because it describes the vastness of God. And, and, and he is big, but he's not too big. It says in verse four of Psalm 113, the Lord is exalted over all the nations. So he, he's, he's above the fray today. His glory is above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high? But then, comma, look at the next phrase. Who stoops down 
to look on the heavens and the earth. So that's trying to show us how big God is. He has to stoop over, if you will, to kind of get down into the, into the affairs of man, which he's acquainted with. Psalm 139 tells us in the opening, he's intimately acquainted with all of our ways. So there's not a thing on your list today that he doesn't know about. There's not a situation going on that he's not ahead of you on. He's up to speed on every single solitary detail of our lives. But then look how he interacts in verse 7. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sets them with princes, with the princes of their people. In other words, God isn't too big to be able to stoop down from this throne that is above the heavens and to enter into the affairs of the world and even into your affairs and the hand he's looking for isn't the amazing, mighty, I'm doing great hand. The hand he's looking for is the needy hand, the person who needs a way up, the person who needs a second chance, the person who needs a breakthrough, the person who doesn't know where to turn. That's the hand the Almighty is reaching for today. And I believe he's going to do that in your life and in my life. And from our house and our family to your house and to your family, we just want to open the doors of that possibility today. And we're doing something that we've never done before. Uh, we're, We're opening up a phone line today for you to text in, not alive to the number where people text when they put their faith in Jesus, but a different number, a phone number. It's going to come on the screen right now for anybody in this gathering who says, I need what we're talking about today. I need God to reach down from heaven into my story and into my life. And I don't know where to turn. And if people will pray for me today in faith, stand with me in faith, believe with me in faith, pray the name of Jesus over my circumstance today, I need that. And I just want to invite you, wherever you are, just text in. The number's on the screen. It's 404-999-7858. And when you text your prayer request, that's going to land right here where we are right now. In fact, there, I think a photo's coming up or a live shot's coming up of our team And when you text, our team's going to receive that. We're going to get a bunch of texts, I'm sure, during this gathering. So we're going to be passing those out throughout our team and our intercessors. And you can be as uh, discreet as you want to be. Just pray for my wife. It's a health issue. Or pray for our marriage. Or pray for my child. Or however you want to say it. Or you can say specifically, my my husband has this disease, and would you pray about this procedure or this surgery or this is going on in our business? And today, we just want to be family. We just want to come around together. At the end, Christian's going to come sit in that chair right there with his guitar, and he's going to lead us in worship as he would if we were all just sitting in a room together, being the church together, because we are a big church today. There are tens of thousands of us in church together today, but we're not too big today for God to come right into your circumstance and to be a difference maker in your life. This story is for everybody. Can I get an amen on that? This story is not for somebody out there today. This story is for everybody. The people at Cumberland almost clapped. They didn't quite clap, but they almost clapped. I'll take it as almost, and we'll add them up. Maybe maybe it'll add up to a clap. People aren't used to being back in church, but you can clap. It's all right. It's, uh, It's fine if you'd like to clap. People at 515 can clap. In fact, you can clap at your house if you would like to. And I know um, that some of you want to, and you're not really sure if it's allowed at the watch event that you're at, but it is allowed even if you're by yourself. In fact, you can just get up, stomp around the room and declare that God's still in your story if you want to, because this is the reality of what we're talking about today. I was struck um, by how Acts 2 quickly turns into a beautiful picture of this. Uh, We've talked in the last two weeks about the beginning of the church. We actually sang about it today. And we see all that unfold in Acts chapter 2. Massive response to the preaching of the gospel. 3,000 people get saved the very first time the gospel is preached. And now they're meeting in homes and they're sharing fellowship together. They're in the temple courts and then they're uh, breaking bread together. It's a beautiful picture of the big and the small. Um, But then notice what happens in chapter 3. It says, one day, Peter and John, and we're not sure if this was a a week after Pentecost or a few days after Pentecost, but very short time period after that moment happened, we read this. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. 
Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Now, can I just stop for a moment? Because if we were in, in a living room together, um, I'd be able to kind of gauge the moment. Can we shift out of if you've heard this story before and into what if you were there and it was happening right this minute? Because I believe this kind of power is going to happen right now in the lives of people. And so let's shift out of, oh, I know this story about the crippled man and Peter and John. And let's shift into what it would have been like to be in the irony of this moment. The gate to the temple court is called beautiful, but right in front of it is a man who's been crippled all of his life. And so the irony of that, the tension of that, that's where we are today. There is a great and good God. There is an amazing kingdom. There is power. There is hope. There is truth. There is life. But a lot of us are sitting right outside the gate, a beautiful gate. But the picture that we're in doesn't match beautiful right now. That wouldn't be the adjective that we put over the circumstance of our lives in this moment. So we can get right into this place. He, he was carried to the temple gate called beautiful, where he was put every day. Now, whether you're at home by yourself or you're in the room right now, can you say that with me? Every day. How often do they carry this guy? Every day. What was his routine? It's afternoon. Every day, they're going to carry me to the gate called beautiful. Every day, they carried him there to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Now, we're going to come back to that in just a moment. I really think it's important, that little phrase. Peter looked straight at him, and so did John. Then Peter said, look at us. I'm going to try to put my take on the inflection. I, I wasn't there, but I don't think it was, hey, look at us. I think it was, hey, man. Look, look at us. Why did they say that? Because the man was staring at the ground. The person was embarrassed. The person was demoralized. The person didn't want to make eye contact because that actually wasn't even cool in the context of the moment to catch somebody eye to eye. The person staring at the ground. Excuse me, could you, could you give me a handout? And Peter's like, hey, man, you, you, need to, you need to make eye contact. We want to see you and we want you to see us. And so he said, look at us. So the man gave him, gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Okay, I was hoping for at least an amen right there. That's bold. Compassion is, I'm going to put a, a dollar in the cup. Boldness is, I'm going to step out in faith, and I don't know exactly how God's going to move, but I'm going to go for it. And Peter and John, they went for it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when you use Jesus' full name, you're, you mean business. The, I, I do this often because um, there are a lot of people named Jesus. But you want to make sure that hell knows which Jesus you're talking about. Jesus Christ, the one that came from Nazareth, walk. And then taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Amen. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Amen. Amen. Then, this is amazing. He went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Now, this, yes, amen. This guy had made it every day to the gate, but he had never been into the courts. He had made it every single day within an, an inch of entering into worship, 
But his friends couldn't even carry him in because a crippled person couldn't defile the place of worship. This guy knew, I'm not into everybody. I don't have a shot. I don't have a chance. I'm never getting in there. I'm just hoping somebody who's going in there will feel like they want to do a good deed and put a few coins in the cup again today. And now he's standing up and he's on his feet and he can walk and he can jump. And as soon as he can, he realizes, not only can I walk, but I can and worship. Not only can I leap, but I can go in with the people of God. And now for the very first time in his life, he's in church. He doesn't know how to act in church. He doesn't know whether you're supposed to leap or jump or run around or praise God out loud. He doesn't know if you're supposed to be high-fiving people you don't know. He just knows, I've never been in here before, and I just got in here, and everything just changed for me. This is what church is about. And I believe that every church in America and in the world will do well to have some more people inside the place who've been sitting outside the gate every single day. But finally, they made it in. And they don't know all the etiquette. They don't know where you stand up and sit down and when you're supposed to go, yeah! And when you're supposed to just go, amen. But they can learn in time. But you know, the truth of it is, I think the reason why a lot of churches are the way they've always been is because the people inside of them, and I'm not speaking about our church necessarily, but man, I, I know how quickly we could all become that, where the people inside of them are so used to doing it their way, they really don't want a bunch of people who don't know how to do it in their amen and at the wrong time. And the nature of the gospel is this is for everybody. We got a guy in here today, a man, that guy was just jumping up and down the whole time during the worship. Now, in, in, in time, we're not probably going to put him on the front row. And we might encourage him, you know, like, hey, jumping is amazing. Let's all jump a little bit. But, you know, you're trying to understand where other people are coming from also. But, but wouldn't it be great just to have somebody in there going, I, I, I've never, I, I, I had no clue. I, I did not know I was going to ever get in here, people. If you knew who I was and where I've come from, you, would, you, you'd be, you might not even want me in here. But then this guy told me about Jesus. I figured out it was for everybody. When he died, he didn't die for one person. He died for all the people. When his blood was shed, it covered all the sins, even all of my sins. And I was like, are you kidding me? I want to put my faith in that Jesus. I want to follow someone like that. And I mean, his spirit came into my life. I have completely seen God do a miracle in my life, people. I'm telling you, this is what we're singing right now. Breakthrough, miracle power. Yeah! And people are like, hey, bro. We've been here a while. <laughs> or would you just put your arm around him and go, yeah. See, this is what we're talking about. A kingdom and a promise that's for everybody. It's possible that from this moment on, somebody who never thought they would get in is going to be in. And the moment they're in, they're going to come in doing what this guy's doing. They're going to be jumping around. They're going to be excited. They're going to be praising God. And then look what happened. This is, this is how contagion happens. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And Peter took the moment, preaches another sermon. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of your fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. So immediately, again, it's not about the guy jumping. It's not about the fact that he got healed. It's not about Peter. It's not about John. It's not even about the miracle anymore. It's about Jesus. Immediately, it's all about Jesus again. Jesus has power 
to change lives. He preaches the gospel, preaches the story, and then in chapter four, something amazing happens. The priest um, and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed, which is the gospel, preaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John. You're like, wah, wah, wah. But this is life. There's an upside to the gospel and there's always going to be somebody who's coming in trying to shut the door on everybody while God's trying to open the door to everybody. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they seized Peter and John. And because it was evening, they put them in the jail until the next day. But look at verse four. But many who heard the message believed and the number of men grew to about 5,000. So a man gets healed, somebody joins the everybody, Jesus is proclaimed, and the church that was just a few weeks ago, 3,000 is now 5,000. This church is exploding, but it's not exploding so fast that a man by the gate called Beautiful can't have his life changed and experience the grace and the power and the goodness of God. And I believe this is our message for the world today. It's our message for you and for everybody in this city and everybody on planet Earth that Jesus is alive, the resurrection is real, and this gospel is for everybody. So I want to encourage you to do what this guy did and ask for help. It seems like a simple thing, but especially to the guys out there, you you understand, I understand, we understand. It's hard sometimes when you're up against it to say, I'm going to reach out to somebody. I'm going to tell somebody that I'm struggling. I'm going to say more than, hey, my business isn't doing great. I'm actually going to tell somebody, I don't know how I'm going to pay our mortgage this month. I have no clue what we're going to do. We're grabbing at straws on every side. And man, I I just, I need prayer. And if you could help me out, that would be great too. I just want to encourage us today to have that family spirit that whatever it is that you need today, that you just reach out and that you just ask for help. I mean, we, we as Passion City Church might not can do everything you need. I individually might not can do what you need. The people sitting in your watch gathering right now might not can do everything you need. Your family members might not can do everything you need. But it starts with just asking. The, 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 the man asked Peter and John, can you help me out? Turns out he asked the right people on the right day. And Peter and John, they're like, you know, your, your cup isn't full today. You need some more coins in there if you're going to make it to tomorrow. But, you know, as it turns out, we don't have any money on us. We were coming up for, for worship in the temple court, coming up for prayer. We, we weren't thinking we needed money. We don't have money. But hello, we do have something. We have the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we're going to exercise the authority of that name and speak that name into your story. And all that happened because he asked them. And so I want to invite you to ask. Second thing I want to encourage us to do in this moment right now is to begin to pray specific prayers. This is one of the things that I have found um, so helpful in this season. Somebody shares what they're going through and you're like, man, God, I do want you to turn the story around, but I don't know if you can turn all that around by 2.30 this afternoon, but God, will you do something specific that they will know in the next five days, six days, seven days, this week, something will happen that is unmistakable, undeniable, clear to them. God is in my story. It doesn't have to solve and resolve, but will you do something, God, that breaks into the story and they know in that instant, God is with me and he is in this story. We're we're praying prayers like that right now for people all through our house. 
and people from our house that have scattered across the nation and even some around the world facing massive, massive mountains and challenges. And without a breakthrough, un- unsure about what tomorrow holds. And we're praying for specific acts on kingdom turf that only God could have organized that say, I'm still in the story with you. And like we just saying, if I'm still in it, what? The story isn't finished if I'm still in it. And you're like, well, I don't even know if I have the faith to pray. That's why I'm asking you, let us pray with you today. Just text right now. And our team will start praying right now. Our team will be praying all day long. Uh, We'll divide these prayer requests out to our staff. We'll be praying for you throughout this day. We'll be praying with you and believing with you this week in Jesus' name. And you can do that if you're sitting in the building right now. You can do it if you're in 515 or wherever you are. You can text in. And we would love to come alongside you right now asking God to do something specific. A few other things that I think that you can do to step into this moment are to celebrate the big and small victories. I really believe if we ask God, God, can you do something? Can you let us know? Can you give us a sign? Can you show us that you're with us? Can you, can you make something happen here that we know? Maybe other people wouldn't have known it, but we know that's God and God is in the story with us. We can keep hanging on because God is still in it. When that happens, even if it's a little thing, have a celebration for that. I think right now we're moving so fast that the bad news just overwhelms all the good news and we'll ask God for something. And by the time he comes through and and begins to answer that prayer, we're already like six requests on down to the next thing. And we forget oftentimes to go back like those 10 lepers. Only one of them went back to Jesus and said, thank you, whatever you said over our lives healed us. Be the one that goes back. Be the one that goes back and says, you know what? It was a tiny thing. It was a little bitty thing. My boss said that uh, my job wasn't going to be furloughed this month. No, he didn't say you're going to get a promotion and you'll be working here 10 years from now, but he didn't furlough us this month. And so for these 30 days, we're going to have a party and a celebration and thank God for the grace that God answered our prayer in that moment. And we saw it, recognized it, And we're going to celebrate that. On the backside of that, I want to encourage you to mourn the losses. I think for me personally, um, as soon as we went into quarantine, I thought, Lord, I've got to, I want to keep you high. I want to keep the spirit of Passion City high. I want to keep our, our eyes high, our vision high. I want to keep saying to people, God is bigger and God is greater. And he is bigger and he is greater. But I don't want us to, to think that because we're, praising God that he's bigger, that we, we can't grieve the loss. And a lot of us have experienced loss in this season, the loss of a loved one. Now, some of you had made so much progress in an area in, in life, and now you feel like you're all the way back to square one or even further. And you feel like all that ground was lost. And it's real. And I just want to encourage us to celebrate every little victory and to genuinely mourn every loss. At some point, we're going to have to come to terms in this nation that hundreds of thousands of people have died. I, I, I don't know who's thinking about that and who's going to plan that memorial service and is anybody even going to want it? Are we going to get on the other side and say, we don't want to go back and we don't want to think about it. And I didn't lose a loved one. And I know it was bad for some people, but our family, we made it through okay. Or as a nation, are we going to want to pause and say, we got to mourn that we have lost a lot of loved ones, a lot of coworkers, a lot of neighbors, a lot of friends have died in this season. We can't just blow by that, hit refresh rate on our minds and our memory and our souls and move on. We got to mourn the losses, whether it was your business or a promotion that was on the horizon or a grad school that didn't happen to say, I'm going to mourn that, but I'm not going to mourn it as those who don't have hope, as the Bible says. I'm going to mourn it as those who have hope. I'm going to recognize what was lost, but I'm going to do it in the context text of a God who's still very much alive, a God who I believe stoops down from heaven and takes the hand of the needy and lifts them up from the ash heap, who takes the hand of the poor 
and lifts them up and sets them with princes. I'm going to keep hope alive that that's my God and he's big, but he's not too big to remember me. I believe this is the engine that allows us to move on. Another thing I just want to encourage you to put in the mix while you're sending your prayer request. Help me, pray with me, walk with me, believe with me, speak Jesus over me. I need a miracle in my life. Send it on. And we're going to pray with you today. But I want to encourage you to take a step of your own. And that is start contributing to the good. What happens in a time like this is all the mountains are so big, all the problems are not solvable. You look at our political situation, you're like, I don't know how to solve that. You look at the racial situation, you're like, I don't know how to solve that. You look at the tension that exists in the financial climate, you're like, I don't know how to solve that. You look at COVID and you're like, I don't know how to solve that. And we don't. No one knows how to solve every problem. So oftentimes, the tendency is we just get paralyzed by the size of the mountains and we don't do anything. I'm telling you, this church of Jesus is powerful today. And if everybody steps into this mentality, I can do something. I can't do everything, but I can do something good for somebody this week. It's a game changer. Some of you have been blessed. If you've been blessed, can you just raise your hand? You've been blessed in the season. Thank you so much. That was, was kind of like uh, an inside joke, but a lot of people raised their hands right there. So that's awesome. If you've been blessed in this season, I just want to encourage you, put your ear to the ground like you've probably already done and be a blessing to somebody else. If you know a coworker who's struggling to pay their mortgage right now, pay it for them. You're like, Louie, I don't even know how much their mortgage is. What are you talking about? 2,800 bucks. You've been blessed. You don't even need to tell them. If you're smart, you can figure out a way to get it to them and they'll never know where it came from except that it will be the answer to the prayer they prayed. God, if you're still in it, the story's not over. Can you just do something, God, to give me a sign? And all of a sudden, 28 bucks floats into their world. Didn't cover all their mortgage from here till May. Didn't pay some of the other things that they're behind on right now. But I'm telling you, they're going to have a little party in their house saying, God came through. The God of heaven stooped down and he took us by the hand. Our October mortgage just got paid. This is the church. You're like, I love that Passion City is doing that. We have been doing that, and we're doing that every day because of your generosity. So thank you for being a stakeholder and an investor in our house. We are helping people every single day at Passion City Church, but we don't know every need. We don't know all the nuance. We don't know what you know. We're not in Indiana. We might not be in Inman Park. We might not be privy to that conversation, but you are. And you know that that family down the street their kids are going back to school in three weeks. That's what it says on the, on the calendar right now. And they're going to be in in-person classes. But you know that mom of those kids is behind on every payment that she has right now. And, and you know that the gift cards that you just quietly drop in the mailbox allow those kids to walk into that classroom feeling good that first day and feeling fresh about what they're walking in with. Outfit isn't the whole, whole story but it's a game changer if you're in the eighth grade. And you can be in that story. And when you do it, here's what's cool. It flips the script from, oh my goodness, everything is falling apart to, no, it's not falling apart. Actually, God is stooping down from his throne, which is above the heavens, and he's taking people by the hand. And you know how he's doing it? He's doing it with the hands and feet of Jesus which is us. It's all of us stepping in and being a part of being an answer to somebody's prayer. Now, there's some things we can't do. I'm I'm not a surgeon, so I can't solve everybody's situation. And I can't step into every deal. I'm not even able to know what all the situations are, and neither are you. So God's going to do some of those things just through our prayers, but he's going to use our hands as well. And then lastly, I would just say in this season to take advantage of the telescope. You know, we've got a microscope going right now in this season. That means that God is investigating. Have you sensed that? God's like looking down beneath the surface and he's trying to like sort stuff out and sift stuff out. You felt that? 
He's kind of like putting us in that little sifting thing, you know, that you put the flour in to make sure there are no bugs or anything in there or in little extra pieces of this or that and the other. And he's kind of putting us through that sifting process so that his church is going to come out brighter and stronger at the end. But so, so don't despise the microscope. It's part of this process. But don't forget about the telescope either because the telescope reminds us that our God is the God of the ages. I love how Paul wrote it to Timothy when he wrote this benediction at the beginning of 1 Timothy chapter 1. He said, now to the king of the ages, the immortal, invisible, to the only wise God. Now to the king eternal. Uh, one translation says the king of the ages. That's the king that's taking you by the hand. We had an unusually weird summer weather-wise in Atlanta, and I try to keep a pulse on kind of photography scene in Atlanta. And a lot of the photographs that you would see in the morning coming through the summer were this big fog layer that would come in. And if you're a morning person and live in town, you probably saw it for yourselves. But there's an image of um, the pencil building in, in this summer morning fog where all you can see at daybreak is just the tiny tip of the building. And it'd be amazing if you had that perspective. If you were anywhere below that, you didn't see anything. You probably even couldn't see the building across from you if you lived in a condominium downtown. Might not could even see the end of your own patio. Um, just nothing there. But you didn't panic if that's all you saw because in another time in life, you had seen this. And so you knew that's what was there, Right? You'd already seen it all before. So when you went back to that morning where the fog rolled in and you just saw the top sticking out, just back to that other image, and all you could just see was that, you didn't freak out and go, oh my goodness, I don't know what happened to Atlanta. Babe, come to the window, quick. Something happened overnight. Atlanta disappeared. Only the top of the pencil building remains. No, you just said, oh, this fog's going to burn off. And when it does, I'm confident that the city of Atlanta is going to be there. I've seen in another season what gives me confidence when I can't fully see in this season. That's the telescope. It's, it's being able to remember I, I've got the opportunity to take the hand of the king of the ages. He transcends eons and millennia. COVID to him is like a blink of an eye. 2020 to him is a breath. He's already aware of 2021 and 2031 and 2041 and in the same way, he could tell you everything about 1820. He knows about 1920 and about 2020 and about every 20. And I need to remember again that he's given me the ability through his word and through worship. You know, what a powerful thing again to think. I've got the decks and I get to decide, do I put on the turntable woe or do I put on worship today? Do I let the enemy decide what we play today? You're not going to believe how bad this is going to get. Everything's going to fall apart. It's going to be the worst case scenario. Things you haven't even dreamed about are going to happen. It's going to be so far worse than you could ever even imagine. And woe's going to play today? Or am I going to say, no, I'm taking off the record of woe, thank you very much, and I'm putting on the record of worship today. I am in charge of the playlist of my life. And I say, Alexa... Play, there's nothing that our God can't do. Alexa, do you know that new song Christian Stanfield led at church? You don't know it yet? Okay, then just play, there's nothing that our God can't do again. Alexa, play Holy Ground. Alexa, I want to hear that song that says, strongholds are bowing to the Savior. Resurrection power over every circumstance. Alexa, you know which one I'm talking about? Play that right now. 
play it again, play it again, play it again. I'm taking off woe and I'm putting on worship because you can't play worship and woe at the same time. And I've got a soundtrack going. I'm taking control of the narrative. I'm deciding what I'm going to sow my thoughts into. And I'm deciding, yes, God, use the microscope, but I'm going to keep looking through the telescope. And you know what I see? I see my family in another season. Can you see your family in another season? My God is the king of the ages. I'm going to be with him in another season. I'm going to have a story to tell. In the next season, I'm going to have a story. That's the possibility of a God who takes a man who every day only made it to the gate. And on this day, he said, you're going through the gate. That's your God. That's the God that we're calling on right now. Same God, same God, same God. That God is the God we're calling on. Same Jesus is the Jesus we're calling on. Same name is the name that we're calling on today. And I believe God is going to turn stories around. I believe what we're praying for is going to happen today. Miracle breakthrough power because there is nothing that says that this guy was the last guy who got up from hopelessness and walked into everlasting life he was one of the first certainly not the last so we're praying right now. Christian's going to come and I just want to encourage you just to lean in. Just in our living room. How often is it the Christian Stanfield guys, Zoom guys, just walks right into your living room. Feels like a living room in here right now. I can see every single person's expression. That's the best of news and the worst of news about our new gathering space here. I love it because I can see you. 515 feels like a living room right now. Your watch gathering is a living room right now, but wherever you are, it is a living room right now. And we're just in it together. And we're believing together. If you have faith today, can you believe for what I would guess are hundreds and hundreds of texts that have come in of people trusting God for all manner of needs. Father, we don't have the resources to do it all, but we have a name today, and so we come in that name. And we pray that name across this room and across 515 and across the technological highway that goes to every person and to every story and to every room. We pray right now and thank you, God, that you are near. God, I thank you, first of all, that you are the Prince of Peace. And so we speak peace, whether it's to a seven-year-old son or daughter that is absorbing all this strife and stress and worry and dread and doesn't even know how to process it, doesn't even know how to articulate it, but it's starting to add up on the inside and break them down. Lord, we pray over two-year-olds and five-year-olds and nine-year-olds and 15-year-olds, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray over 90-year-olds and everybody in between. You are the Prince of Peace, God, and we pray that you would come and be the Prince of Peace right now, that you would allow people to experience 
the power of your peace, Jesus, right now. Thank you that you are a restorer, that you mend what is broken, that you can take fragments on the ground and put them back together again. Thank you that you make rivers flow in deserts. Thank you that you still give visions and dreams. Thank you that you are a healer. Thank you that you are still writing. There's not one person today whose story is finished, not one. And so we pray in the power and the authority that is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that even now you will give sight to the blind. That you will calm the storm. That you will speak value and worth. Thank you, God, that connections are happening right now, heavenly and earthly. We thank you for it. We are asking for it. We are knocking and seeking and asking, believing that you're going to hear and answer and open the door. Victory is found, so let 
as you're in the story As long as you're in it No, the story's not finished I know you've overcome So I know I'll overcome As long as you're in it No, the story's not finished I know you've overcome So your church is gonna overcome today that little last part got like a little surprise yeah. it's like song ends and then there's this and this line Christian's gonna sing just as we're just coming to the end of our gathering today it's about um, eternal life it's about that moment Jesus took all of our sins paid the price so that we could be forgiven if we were willing to ask for help and say, I need a savior, I need forgiveness, I need grace, I need mercy, I need Jesus. And maybe right now that's where you are. Maybe that's the moment where you're going from death to life, from outside the gate to inside the family of God. And all you have to do is just say, Jesus, I wanna ask you to save me right now. I mean, just say that to him, just tell him. Thank you for dying in my place. I ask you to forgive me for all my sin. I'm asking you to wash all the guilt, and all the shame away. Jesus, I'm asking you to give me a brand new heart. Just tell him, I want to know you. I want to follow you. I want to live for you. All the days of my life, Jesus. That's how simple faith is and how powerful it is. So if that's your prayer today for the very first time to ask for forgiveness, He's forgiving you right now. He's saving you right now. So just tell him, say, Jesus, I believe it and I receive it in Jesus' name. That is the miracle of miracles. And I'd love for you to tell us, uh, Christian's going to sing that last little bit, but it may be very cool to think that somebody's getting that right now for the very first time and then being able to sing this. So let's just sing this last little line that I'm going to pray for us before we go. Here the cross stands before me Yes, it's finished, it is done Yeah, I heard you told death that it's over So in your name I claim this fight is won. <laughs> Thank you. And um, your writing partner on that, uh, yeah. say his name again. It was Patrick Mayberry. Patrick. Patrick, thank you. You're probably not watching this right now, but might be. If you are, thank you. And thank you. Special. 
Man, I just sense that uh, that is God's heart for people today. Um, I forgot to say, but I just felt like God had put on my heart this morning uh, that somebody in the middle of where we're talking about right now needs this message. I feel like we're on a TV show all of a sudden, but hey, it's a good show. Um, but uh, this is not our book, it's not my book. These are friends of ours, Jay and Catherine Wolf. You probably know them if you've been around our house. But if you don't, this book is their journey of believing God through it all. This is, this is a story of people who are putting on praise and putting on worship and taking off woe. Um, even with a story that's very hard and difficult, they are a loud voice for the power of Jesus. And uh, I just woke up this morning thinking somebody needs this. And so that same number that you texted your prayer request to, um, I, I wish we could give away one to every single person, but I don't even know. For the first 25 people that say, I really feel like I need this message of overcoming through hardship, suffering strong for Jesus and his glory. Um, we we want to just send this to you as, just because I felt like God wanted somebody to get a hold of it today and because we love Jay and Catherine. They don't even know we're doing that today. So um, just text in. Don't stop texting your prayer request. If just even right now you're thinking, I didn't do it earlier, but I want to do it now. We're going to be here praying all day long. And uh, can you guys that are in 515 in Cumberland, can you just kind of agree with us right now in Jesus' name that we're going to believe God? We're going to believe God's going to do things in people's lives today. There are going to be stories that come out of this day. There's going to be, there are going to be people going, wow, right. God did that. So it's not just about what he's going to do in your life. It's what he's going to do in the lives of people around you when they see what he does in your life. I'm pumped. I'm excited. Thank you guys for being here at church at Passion City. Lord willing, we're going to be right here next week in the house of God. We're going to have stories to tell and songs to sing. We're going to, we're going to believe again that God is going to get us through this week, but he's also going to do more than just get us through. He's going to do great things, and I am really confident of that. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, not big church made small, like today, but small church made big. So we're going to put Christian in a rocket and shoot him into space. It's going to be amazing <laughs> and uh, awesome. So thanks for being here. We love you guys. We'll see you back next week. Passion City Church.